you enjoyed that overview of working with our image documents in Photoshop. In our earlier bird's eye view of the interface, we saw there was a tools panel on the left. And there sure are a lot of tools there. And even more than we can see initially because there are tools hidden behind tools. The tools panel has several groupings. At the top, we have our move and selection tools along with our layout and color tools. We also have a group of painting and retouching tools, another group for drawing and type tools that are vector based. We've already seen the hand and zoom tools for navigating our workspace. And then finally, we have our color settings that apply to many of the tools and some viewing option settings at the bottom. Let's explore the move and selection tools a bit more closely. Throughout this course, I'll try to use images that are freely available to us, public domain, Creative Commons license, so you can download the image and work with the same image I'm using. This particular image comes from one of my favorite sources, is unsplash.com, and it's a photo by Farshad Resvanian. And let me show you where I found that. So in the browser, I simply went to unsplash.com, and I searched for hot air balloon. I'm going to scroll through, and here's the photo that I want. I'm going to click on it, click the download arrow, and there are several sizes. And I'm going to click the medium size, and that downloaded to my computer. And then I always want to give people recognition for the assets that we're using. So we can simply copy this photo by Farshad Resvanian on Unsplash and use that. If you wanted to do a link inside a website, this little copy to clipboard will give you the link as well. Close the X and click that X to close. I'm going to also get another image. And that's this one here by Bryce Bowler. Again, I'm just going to click, download. And for this one, we're going to use the small one, 640 by 961. And again, I can copy that information. I have a Word document I keep track of this information in. You can do it in Excel spreadsheet. It's always good to keep track of your assets um, as you're building a library of assets to use, what the sources are, and that you actually have license to use it. Again, I'm just going to close. And I'm going to go back to Photoshop and open those two documents. I have both images open in Photoshop and we have tabs at the top to go between them. I'm going to click on the tab to go back to the image by Farshad Resvanian. The focus of this lesson is to work with the move and selection tools that we have at the top of our tools panel. The first one here with the four headed arrow is our move tool. And notice that with a lot of tools, there's a little triangle in the bottom right hand corner. And that means there's more tools here. If I click that little triangle, it's going to show me the tool. So we have a move tool and an artboard tool. The artboard tool would be used for if you want to do a layout, maybe say of stationary for a client and you want to have business cards and letterheads and uh, maybe a type of flyer or a brochure. The artboard lets you put those different documents together uh, in what we call an artboard and you can select the different documents throughout. I use artboards very, very rarely, so we're going to kind of skip over that, at least at this point in the course. But all you would do if you wanted to take that tool is to click on it, and notice the tool now has changed. I'm going to go back to the Move tool. Now, before I go there, I want to, notice, I want to point out one other thing. There are keyboard sh shortcuts here. They both have the letter V. So I'm going to go to the Move tool. If I'm using a different tool other than the Text tool, this does not work with the Text tool, but if I Press the letter V on the keyboard. Notice my tool is going to jump from this lasso tool to the move tool. That now is my selected tool. If I do a shift V, it'll cycle to the next tool in that list of the tools that are in that spot. So shift V takes me back to the move tool. Now I'm not going to use the move tool at the moment. We'll come back and look at that. It is simply used for moving areas, selections within a document. It can also be, it's also used for removing the contents of a layer. The next tool is the marquee selection tools. And we start with the rectangular marquee. And there are four tools here, rectangular marquee, elliptical marquee, single row, and single column. I use the rectangular marquee tool more than any of the others. And very rarely do I use the row and column, but we'll look at those. So with the rectangular marquee tool, we can simply 
drag an area that we want to select. And then I can do things to that area, such as, we'll talk about adjustments down the road, but I could go in and change the hue and saturation of that selection. And maybe I want to colorize it and give it a tint. So it works within the area of the selection. That's the advantage of doing selections. It cho chooses the area that we want to work with. I'm going to cancel that. The other thing I could do is go to the image menu and choose crop and it'll crop to the selection. Again, I'm going to undo that. Now all the tools have options at the top in the options bar. So with the rectangular marquee tool, I can select an area and then there are four icons here. So I'm, I'd have the icon selected for the new selection. And if I come over and just make a new selection, it's going to eliminate the first one. However, if I choose the second option, which is to add to the selection, now I can add to the selection and joins those two together. If I want to deselect, I can go to the new selection, just click, that'll deselect. Again, I'm going to undo that. Control Z is my undo, so it's under edit, undo. The other way to deselect is do a control D or command D on the Mac. That's a good keyboard shortcut to remember because you can use that all the time to deselect things. We will make lots of selections and we'll also often want to unselect those items. So that's a good keyboard shortcut to remember. Control, control D on Windows, command D on the Mac. Again, I'm going to make a, a selection, new selection, and the the third one here is to subtract from that selection. So I'm eliminating an area. Make a larger selection here. And we'll take the select er unselect area and I'm going to do an area inside of that selection. And now what really is selected is the area between these two. And I'll demonstrate that again simply by going to the image menu, adjustments, human saturation, and let's change that area. I'm going to make it really saturated. And notice it's only using that area between those two selections because I deselected this area or unselected it. I'll click cancel and again control D. The fourth option here is to intersect with the selection. So I can create a new selection and then do the intersection. And so it chooses the area where those two rectangles overlap. There's an area here for feather. What that means is simply to soften the edge. And we would do that oftentimes we want to select something and maybe paste it into another document. I don't want a hard edge. I can feather it. I'm going to skip over the anti-alias for now. Control D to deselect. There are three styles, normal, fixed ratio, and fixed size. We've been using normal. Normal allows me to draw any size I want, any dimensions that I want. The fixed ratio, I can specify a width and a height, and it will maintain that ratio so it will always be, in this case, twice as wide as it is high. And then the third option is a fixed size. So in the fixed size, I'm going to type in 1280px for width and 720px for height. So 1280 by 720, standard HD video size. And now if I just click somewhere, it's going to give me a rectangular marquee selection that is 1280 pixels wide by 720 high wherever i click if i click down the corner it's going to put it down the very corner wherever i click if there's room and enough room to go to the to the right it will stretch to the right but again if it can't fit all the way to the bottom it'll take it up 
select and mask. So there's a button here for select and mask. And that takes me to another screen where I can do some work on selecting an area. I got some brushes and so forth. This is a more advanced topic at this point. I just want to point out where that takes you and there's buttons. There's controls over here on the right and buttons to say OK and to cancel. We'll come back and look at that much later. I'm just going to click cancel. Under the rectangular marquee tool is the elliptical marquee tool. Notice that the keyboard shortcuts here are M and M and it's only for the rectangular elliptical. So I can do an M to get to either of those and to cycle between those two, I can do a shift M. I'm just going to choose the elliptical marquee tool and it allows us to make elliptical selections. We get the same options we had before on our options bar. We can create a new selection. We can add to that selection. We can subtract from a selection. And we can do an intersection. We can feather. Now anti-aliasing, notice it's, it's not grayed out like it was in rectangular. What anti-aliasing does is it allows us to kind of fill in the gaps around circular edges. Anti-aliasing for me largely comes into play in working with fonts and type and our typography. And it can make things a little softer and more readable. Again, I'm not gonna worry about that at this point. And we have the same styles we had before in terms of normal fixed ratio and fixed size. Now, one thing I wanna point out, I'm gonna go back to making it a new selection. I'll do a control D to deselect again. Think of making a, a elliptical marquee selection as starting in one corner of a box that contains the elliptical marquee. I'm gonna do control D. If I hold down the shift key, I will get a perfect circle. And I forgot to mention that if you're using the rectangular marquee tool with a normal style, hold down the shift key and it'll draw a perfect square. Now, if you hold down the alt key, and I'm gonna deselect, it will allow you to create a selection from the center out. And if you hold down the shift and alt keys together, I'm gonna come out where this gondola is, I can draw a perfect square from that center point out. So the same thing with the elliptical marquee tool, I'll hold down shift M to get to elliptical marquee. If I hold down the alt key, I'm gonna drag from the center out. And if I hold down both the shift and alt key, I'm gonna draw a perfect circle from the center out. And control D to deselect. Same options here for fixed ratio. And again, think of this as a box surrounding your ellipse. So if, if one to one, that's gonna be basically my square. But let's say I wanna do a one that's uh, twice as wide as it is high. It's gonna constrain my mouse movements to get that two to one ratio. Again, if I go fix size and 1280 by 720, I think I'm clicking the upper left hand corner of that box, it's gonna give me the elliptical selection from that point. Now on this one, it does create the selection and go off the edge. Let me deselect. To be honest, I don't have a lot of uses for the single row marquee or the single column marquee. Let's look at the single row. If I just simply click somewhere, it's gonna take the row of pixels all the way across. Now the one thing, place where I've used that is to go to the edit menu and choose define pattern. And I'll give this a name of balloon row. 
Then I'll create a new document. I'm going to make it 1920 by 1280, same size. Say create. And I'm going to select all, which is a control A, or you could use the selection uh, rectangular marquee tool and select everything. But here I'm going to go to the edit menu and choose fill. I'm going to fill with a pattern. And the pattern I want is that one that I just created, which is the balloon row. And so it took that pixels of the row and stretched them from top to bottom. This can make for some kind of cool backgrounds and there's other techniques we can use with this, such as blurring it and so forth. But this becomes a basis for, for a really cool background. And if I want those stripes to be horizontal, I can go back to my document, choose the single column marquee, make a selection, define a pattern. I'll call this one balloon column. And click OK. And then I'll go back to my background document. And I still have everything selected, so I'm simply going to go to the Edit menu and choose Fill. Again, we're going to do a pattern, but this time I'm going to choose that column that I just created. And now I have horizontal rows. So that's the rectangular marquee, the elliptical marquee, the single row, and the single column marquee tools. If you'd like to see more videos in the Photoshop Practicum playlist, click the title at the bottom. If you'd like to be alerted to new videos, please click my photo in the top right to subscribe to the channel.